our corn done now, which has been really slow going because of the way the wind damaged it. We've been having to drive one direction, trying to get everything we can. But today, we got the second machine out now. We are gonna try going back to soybeans again. We don't have many of those out yet because as soon as we started on them, it's been raining every three days. So every time the beans are dry enough, we get more rain. Just like right now, today, it's dry enough. There's a bunch of rain coming tomorrow, allegedly. Dad's gonna head down with that trailer. I'm gonna grab a giant torque wrench and retorque some lug nuts on a semi over there from, from a tire that we had to have fixed. Yep. 400 foot pounds. No loose ones, so that's good. Well, here we go. I'll go put a soybean header on this thing and see where they're at. up yet but onyx is here to give me a ride we're doing some shuffling it's been wet for a week and i haven't hardly seen another combine moving i know a few guys were going on corn like us but that's the third neighbor i've seen going on soybeans this morning so we're going to finish taking out uh 10 or 15 acres of corn over there just to square off a field and then i think we're going to get both machines going on soybeans onyx is going to head over and finish filling that truck that Alan is in. And then we're all gonna ride back with Alan and get the other two trucks. We're gonna have a lot of equipment going down here today. But only four guys, so hopefully we can just keep things going. There you can really see how down this corn is. That's a lot bigger struggle inside that cab than it looks like out here. ready I guess we're all taking the truck we're gonna ride back in that that makes more sense now we will have all three trucks down at the fields feels awfully dry and windy out here the Sun is out so these soybeans should be good to go I'll get this thing hooked up and going while dad finish up that little bit of corn finishes up there that's the correct way to talk Let's go see what we've got. Well, that's not bad. 72 bushel beans at 11.5% moisture. That was a pretty good spot, I'll, I'll give you that. We don't average 70 with soybeans around here. If we hit 50, we're happy. These are actually a Paloma soybean from Farmer's Business Network. I'm looking forward to seeing how they do. They've had some really good genetics in their lineup the last few years, so we actually have quite a few acres of Paloma beans through them. If you're a farmer and you're not a member yet, there's no reason not to be. The membership's free. Check out FBN.com. Tell them Zach sent you. They've got some really good deals coming up on their Cyber November sale, which actually starts October 18th. So check out the prices there. I'm gonna see what kind of a job this machine is doing. Now it was set before and it was doing a dang good job. However, the beans have changed a lot in the last 10 days since we were last able to come out here and harvest. Eh, there's some there. Maybe I close the sieves down a little bit. They're whole so they're not breaking. I got a feeling 
Oh yeah. Oh, they sh they shatter easy. They're big beans though. Those are a good looking bean. When you can grab the pods and just roll them like that and they snap right open, that's uh, that's a good thing. That's what we need for harvest. But if it gets too dry, then they start shattering at the head. It's hard to get them in there without breaking them open. Well, we went one extreme to the other. That's kind of what soybeans do. They sit wet for 10 days. And then when you get a dry heat like this with some wind, they just snap right down. Now they're too dry. So the problem you get is you lose a little bit of weight when they get that low in moisture. But the more difficult thing is they shatter so bad at the head. That's where these prairie wind systems can be really helpful. I can pull the reel up and out of them and try to touch them less. And that looks pretty good back there. I don't see a lot of splits. There isn't a lot of pods. I think I'm just gonna slow it down, open it up a little bit, be easy on them, Mommy open the sips the some, over there. pull the reel out, try to drive faster to feed them in. Simple as that, here we go. Dad's here with the second machine. We switched the three or four things around on the outside, you gotta switch. Now we're gonna throw the honeybee header on this one. First machine set, then we switched, moved things around. Dad took off to shuffle some more stuff. He's gonna come back and run that machine. So now I get to work on setting a second machine. It is so much quieter in this cab versus the other one. Everything's coming in pretty clean here. There's got a few more adjustments on this header. So it took me a little bit to adjust some of that but I got it going now. This thing has the air pressure bar in here, so I've got a separate box here to set my air pressure, which I'll set the rigidity of the head, how much it's gonna contour, how rigid it is or not. I got the air pressure with the prairie wind system. I've got actually feeder house tilt, but not only that, but the, the header itself has got tilt built in right there. So I can actually tilt the header a little bit that way, and then I actually put a little bit more aggression in the reel so you can set it so that the fingers kind of do this or so that they sweep a little bit more. I had to tilt them back a little more. So it took a little time to get that set up, but once you get all that, this thing is a solid head. The adjustments are what really makes it so versatile and it just, it's brand new. It hasn't been in the field for anyone yet. I spoke too soon. I've got a boot over there, great big elbow rubber boot for the wind system hanging down. I can't run without it because it's hanging there flopping off the reel. And I can't take the other end off to just take it off. I need tools. There's my tools right there. found those other gear wrenches and extra ones in so I threw both sets in there metric and standard. I better put a wrench on that before I wreck it, huh? That's a big impact. I checked the other side too, those are all good. I don't know, I had the air pressure cranked up pretty fast a couple of times so again, it's all brand new, everything's gonna work its way in. Go here and then I'll take you like on the go. Yeah, yep, I think I'm completely full though now, right? Easy fix, just had had to be done. You're gonna wait for one of you guys to come by here. Now we're trucking. Things are looking pretty decent here. This is gonna be going so much faster than corn.
brought me lunch today, so I got to hang out with her for a little bit. But now, you gotta go. Already. But thank you for the cheeseburger. Did you have a good day at school? No. Is that because it's school? I felt the same way back then. Um, do you have anything to say to the viewers? No. Well, that's, that's, what to say. that's what you have to say is no. Well, thanks for riding with me. No, no. Just got a radio call from dad. I got a full hopper right now, but I'm in road gear. Said he's got a fire. I know nothing about it. I saw a little bit of smoke. I see a little more smoke right now. Unless that's coming from a fire extinguisher, but I got an extinguisher on the steps out here, so I'm getting there as fast as I can in road gear. I don't see, I think dad's laying underneath or he's up front. Hopefully that's fire, yep, that's fire extinguisher. He's still using it, so. Well, three times. It's melting, for... melting that plastic. Yeah. Can unhook the head, but <coughs> maybe we're okay. Right. It's still smoking. Slip clutch, I bet. No, I think crash sitting on top of it. Oh, really? But it shouldn't have gotten that hot. The slip clutch must have gotten hot to do that. Yeah, it shouldn't have. Because otherwise, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be doing that. It shouldn't have gotten hot enough for that. Yeah, it really shouldn't have. No. Well, there's obviously not flames. Had to be the slip clutch just got hot enough to start the chaff on fire. You got my attention. Oh, I bet it did. It got mine too. Yeah. I was going to unhook the head at first and then this kind of... A little charged, but it didn't seem to work the best at first. But maybe I was just too excited. Yeah. It stinks. It does. Watch the beans on the ground too so they don't start on it because everything's so yeah, dry. Start it up at a low... Yeah. At a low, uh, just that idle. Yep. I'll jump up there. Well, that's a lot better than I was thinking. I was worried it was uh, an electrical fire or engine compartment or a bearing or, I don't know, something worse, but that's, that's fixable. We're just gonna start it up and rotate it here. These guys might get soybean dust all over them. I'm gonna spin it around for them. Turn it sideways so the wind doesn't blow on them, blows away. Well, things moved, and I think now we got, we can cut some stuff out of there maybe and just hang that drive shaft up out of the way. It's hard to say what started it. Well, there had, it was packed full of bean chaff inside there though, huh? It must have been. So I don't know, but would it create enough heat? Maybe the slip clutch is fine and the chaff just caught from rotating? That's what I wonder. I saw the flames on top of the, the top of the shield first. Yep. YouTube content, you gotta do better than that. Okay, that's big enough for me. That was big enough? That's big enough. Got your attention. It did, and even, even still have charged the extinguisher. I know, yeah, when I saw what it was, I left the pin in mine. Yeah. Just so yeah. we've got one. We've got more at the shop we'll have to throw in. He's just gonna run without the wind system now, and uh, I, I'm gonna put my fire extinguisher back and probably check mine for chaff inside the shield. All right, so I'm guessing his was just packed tight inside here. I 
Let's see. See if I got. I mean, there's a very small amount of heat there, although it's been sitting for a few minutes. But I'm thinking it was just running against the chaff in there and eventually lit up. I don't think it was a slip cl slip clutch problem. I had just lined up with Onyx and we were getting ready to dump on the go when Dad called. All he said was, "I have a fire." That was it. I figured that that was enough, really, to get me to head his direction. I went 30 feet over this little patch we have here. So we got some water hemp weeds in there, but I've got a draper belt not moving. So one half of my head, as you can see there, is all plugged up now. So the other side's clean as it should be because it feeds in towards the center. This side is not doing that. So I can try, it moves about six inches, you can see there. So if I put it the other way, because I reversed it there, that's all it does. This is a stupid occupation. So the issues in here, I'm quite certain, but why it happened, if something got in there, it got underneath the belt. I've heard of this happening. I have never had this happen. I hear it sucks. I can't see anything underneath there, so I can't really pull on anything from that end. It's a pretty green spot here, and we got some thick weeds in here. Not that thick, I've been through a lot worse. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. I don't even have a pair of gloves on me. That's how easy this fall has been. If you've ever tried to grab a handful of dried soybeans, you understand. I can pull on this, but I got a feeling there might be more than what I see here going on. Something caused this. I wonder if I'm going to have to loosen this old belt up. Yeah, there's a whole lot of them underneath there. I'm just gonna go up the hill by the truck where there's tools and shut the thing down. You're not gonna believe it. All I did was drive it up the hill and try it again. Apparently I just had to get near the toolbox and that fixed it. I wish everything was that easy. It must have somehow got a slug of those green weeds underneath there maybe? I don't know, I've never, I've never had that happen but anything's possible. going a lot better now we've had two machines running for like an hour without a single one of us having to stop for a single fire or a plugged head or a belt not moving or anything like that sunshine rainbows and unicorns or whatever as they say when you're in Rome I could maybe even turn the radio on now up this 60 acres back here it's part of this 200 acre field but this area has got a lot of little rocks in it and I heard a couple little clunks along the way and I don't like that because it means crap like this is getting in there but here's one thing I really like about these honeybee heads they have their own little rock trap here this is plugged with a lot of dirt but watch this it's actually got a lever on it here it's tight but oh. Got its own rock trap. There's a couple little ones in there. The combine's got a rock trap also. I'm gonna dump that too after I clean this out. Uh-oh. We'll do that one in the morning. That's gonna require a few more bolts. Hmm, shoot. That one too. Not 
Nothing in that one other than a few corn cobs. It's good to dump those traps once in a while anyway. May as well hit the restroom. Anybody in there? Salted nut rolls are the most underrated candy bar. They could potentially be the most delicious as well. That's going to do it for this 200 acres. We've got uh, another 20 acres right up the road that we're going to go try and grab tonight. That way it'll make everything a lot faster tomorrow because that 20 acres is the last stuff down here where we're five miles south of home. Everything else is right at home. Well, I lied. There's some stuff five, five miles north, which for a lot of people is right at home. But for us, that's one of our farther fields. We're only moving one mile up the road, so I'm going to hop in the grain cart and run blocker for Dad. Traffic's not real heavy out here right now, or ever, but I'm just going to run up the road and block it so he can get up the road. To give you guys an idea on how bad traffic is here, you see way out there on that ridge? That's several miles away. All those lights are shops. That's a big truck shop down there. There's just, there's just not a lot of traffic. And that's exactly how I like it. Still all clear to the intersection. I don't see any lights from any direction. Still all clear, I'm at the intersection now. No lights anywhere. While we're waiting here, I should probably tell you guys about our merch store at farmfocus.com. It's the only place you can get our official merch, including this farm around and find out shirt. Shameless plug. Oh, there's there's a link down below as the YouTuber kids say. Check it out if you want. If you don't want to, whatever. That is the last little bit down here. I've got, no, not a cartload, but well over a truckload in there. So now, same program on the way back. I'm gonna go pretty slow because it's a pretty good load to pull down the road, but I'll head up to this intersection and wait for him. Then we'll get back, load the trucks, take the trucks home. Where I can take some cold medicine and hopefully put myself to sleep for the night. We're gonna go ahead and take the trucks home so we can run those beans up into a bin in the morning. Awesome night there, beautiful moon. And we will come back and get this stuff. First thing tomorrow, move everything else home. It's dark around here tonight. No dryer running, we weren't dumping in the pits. Quiet. That's it. I'm out. I'm done. Dad's leaving. This cold is whooping me in the evenings. So I'm gonna go, I don't know, take some Benadryl and pass out for a few hours because I don't have to check in the dryer tonight. Thanks for watching.